Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. It's Kyle. Today we're going to talk about how to use and activate the most popular DC fast charging networks here in the United States. Today's video is going to be for the newish EV drivers who don't typically use DC fast chargers. We're going to be talking about how to pay, activate, and actually charge your car in the best possible way. Now there are a plenty of DC fast charging providers, although we are gonna be touching on the most popular. So of course, we'll be talking about the Tesla Supercharger Network, Electrify America, ChargePoint, and EVGO. We're gonna be visiting each one of these stations, talking about how to get your credit card set up and how to actually charge your car. So let's go have some fun. We're starting here at Electrify America. Now these sites are absolutely beautiful. They have plenty of chargers at them, but how do you activate? Well, there's a couple different ways. So come on over to, I guess we'll pick an open stall here. Uh, each Electrify America st uh, install has at least one Shadamo, typically just one, as pretty much the rest of the country is going towards CCS connections. But to go, you pretty much plug your car in first. So you pull out your CCS plug, plug in your car, put in your credit card, and then it should go. That is if you really don't use these. However, there is a better way. Let's go talk about it. Now what most drivers will do is they'll open up the Electrify America app. So we'll tap into this, here we go. And then it will display basically where all the fast chargers are across the country. You can see them loading in here as we go. So as we zoom in, you'll see we're at Pleasant Valley Promenade. I will click this and open it up. Now this is, I've created an account through this application and I've also paid for a membership program called Pass Plus. Once you download the Electrify America application, you put in all your credit card details, set up your credentials, it's pretty easy. Uh, you have the option to sign up for a Pass Plus membership. What this is, it's a $4 per month membership fee. It waives the $1 session activation fee and also gives you discounted charging rates. I have it, I don't use Electrify America all that often. However, it still works out to be better for me. So I pay for the Pass Plus. So what I do is I log into the application, we scroll in on that charger as mentioned, and then we swipe to activate. Let me show you how that works. When you look up at the charger that your car is plugged into, you can see here, this one's at number three, that one's number two over there. I'll load up the app and I'll scroll over here. Car is on number three, so I will select this and swipe to start charging. So now I've swiped to do it. On the charger over here, you'll see it says, okay, we need to plug in. We should have done that first. It says, please plug in. So I'll open up the i3's charging port, plug in. It says initiating, initiating, and essentially that's all you have to do. You just swipe on the charger, plug your car in, and boom, you can hear it go. Contactors just clicked and now we are charging. There it goes. So this particular station, because the i3 can only pull 50 kilowatt max, it's put into the lowest charging tier and it's 15 cents per minute. Now Electrify America charges in pricing tiers. I believe it's one to 75 kilowatt, 75 to 150, and then everything above 150. You pay a per minute fee the more expensive it goes. Now this isn't the real proper way to charge for fast charging. What we should be doing is charging by the kilowatt hour, which is the actual energy dispensed into the vehicle. But this is a good way to basically encourage automakers to put in faster charging in their cars and for you to, to not keep charging after your vehicle has tapered. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. When you pull up to a fast charger in your electric vehicle, it will charge the fastest under certain scenarios. The first is your battery temperature is warm. So you may wanna drive the car a little bit aggressively on the way to the charger if you have energy to burn. You want that battery nice and toasty. You also want the battery to be quite dead. Typically electric cars will take maximum speeds until they reach between 50 and 80%, depending on the car. Most cars start to slow down above 50%. So to maximize the amount of uh, time that you are spending on the trip charging, I should say to minimize, you should pull in with a dead battery and ride that charging curve until it tapers. And Electrify America's pricing scheme actually benefits those who unplug when their car is slowed down because you're paying per minute. 
There's another thing to talk about with Electrify America as well, and that's that each station may not output the same amount of power. Now, in a lot of sites, you'll see limited to 50 kilowatt. You'll find these inside city centers, and this is just a lower charging speed. Now, a lot of cars can only take 50 kilowatt. The Bolt, I think, can do 55. The BMW i3 here can only do 50, and the new Mini Cooper SE can only do 50 kilowatt. So that's fine for a lot of vehicles. And then you can bump up from 50 up to 150 kilowatt, and typically you'll find these at almost every Electrify America station is at least 150 kilowatt. Watt. And these are cars that can do like uh, Audi e-tron and a few others can go up to 150 kilowatt. So you would try to find those so you can get the maximum charging speed for your vehicle. And then you'll find others typically on major highways that allow up to 320 or 350 kilowatt charging speed. Now there's no vehicle currently in production today that can take that much speed. But if you have like a Porsche Taycan that can do 270 kilowatt, you'll want to make sure that you find ones that that say up to 300 plus kilowatts so that you can take advantage of that higher charging speed. So something to keep in mind. Also, as an etiquette rule, if you have a low charger, low slow charging vehicle like the BMW i3, don't plug into the 350 kilowatt ones if you see other vehicles around. Plug into a 50 or 150, leave the faster chargers for the vehicles that can take them. Let's go to EVgo. And now you join us at an EVgo fast charging location. This is an interesting one because you can see the DC fast charger here on the left and then a level 2 J1772 unit here on the right. And this is a really good idea because not always do you need the fastest level of charge. For example, we're at a hotel. You don't need to fast charge your car. You can put it on the level 2, which costs less, and let it charge up overnight slowly. No need for fast charging in that case. However, we're right off the highway as well, and so you can always pull up, plug up, charge your car quickly, use the restroom, and get back on the road. So let's talk about how to activate this station. So these arguably don't look as nice as a lot of the Electrify America stations, but there are new EV goes going in, and there's another problem in particular with these stations, especially on the older inner city installs. EV goes are 50 kilowatt, they say, but they're actually only 90 to 100 amps versus the 125 amps of the 50 kilowatt on Electrify America stations. So you're losing, let's say, somewhere around 20% less power for that same rating. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're curious what all that means, we'll have a video on the future really diving into the in-depth portion of DC fast charging. So I suggest that you subscribe to the Inside EVs channel below and we'll talk more about it then. So how do you activate an EVgo charger? Well, it's a little more complicated than Electrify America where we just were because there's no credit card slot. So you need an account to use EVgo. So what you do, of course, is you pull out your phone, you load up the EVgo app. So let's do that here. And I've already created an account, of course. Now they can actually send you a little card, which is nice. So you can come here and tap your card to the reader and then go instantly. So the first thing you need to do is connect the car up to the charger. So let me go plug this thing in. It's typical CCS, of course. So now that we're connected to the DC fast charger, I'll select the location on a map, which I've already done. And then all I do is swipe just like we did previously. Now this is 27 cents per minute. So it's a little bit more expensive than Electrify America. And that's just for this particular place. If you'd like us to compare all of the DC networks in the future, again, subscribe. I'll be comparing EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint, and a few others to see how they all stack up against each other. And here you can see the charger is kicking on. You'll hear a click here in a second. Oh, it may have already done that. And we're supplying power to the vehicle. Pretty sweet. And now we're at our next charging company, which is ChargePoint. Now ChargePoint's pretty interesting because anyone can host a ChargePoint charger. You essentially pay to put it in. Uh, you can hook it up with DC or AC, and then you can host that ChargePoint charger 
on their app for public. So for example, this one's branded as the Central Electric Energy Cooperative for North Carolina. That's put in these stations here. They've put in their own network, but they're all charge point units. Now this particular unit is the brand new charge point charger. I believe it's 75 kilowatt max and it is really nice. It's dead silent, super great to use. I'll show you how to activate it for a minute. But when we were back at the Electrify America station, I had mentioned CCS and Chatamo, and a lot of drivers may not know what the difference is. So let me show you over here, and we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more in detail as to what cars use what uh, plugs, but essentially CCS, combined charging system, is going to be the most common, and that's what the BMW i3 uses, it's what Rivian uses, Lucid, all of the new cars coming out, Bolt, Nero, Kona, however, a few cars such as the Mitsubishi iMev and the Nissan Leaf use Chatamo. This is uh, commonly found on Japanese charging units and uh, this is essentially being phased out. It's not really great. Goes up to about 100 kilowatt max, although most are 50 kilowatt, 125 amp peak. And um, yeah, so CCS is essentially what's plugged into the car, but I'll overlay that image here. And there you go, that's what that looks like. But let's talk about how to activate charge point chargers. Now, this is really great. It's really cool. Now, Electrify America supports this as well, where you can basically go up, tap your phone and let it charge, but it just doesn't work so well yet. However, the opposite with charge points, really amazing. What you do is you go to chargepoint.com, set up your account. Of course, you need a lot of accounts. Maybe one day someone will create a system that works across all of these brands to just let you charge with one account. But as of yet, there is nothing. So you load up the charge point app, you add it to your wallet on your phone, and then all you do is you click this, you select charge point ink, you hold it near the reader, boop, and that's how you charge. <laughs> It's just so simple. And I've just ended charging there since we were already charging. So let me reinitiate. There we go. And now she'll start back up. So that's super simple. Now, the other thing you can do with ChargePoint is they'll send you a little card. And all you do is you just tap it to the machine, same way. You can also click on the charger in their application and activate it. It's all pretty standard. But how do you find these chargers? Each charging company wants you to go to their specific application, find their chargers on their network so they can sell you the electricity. But there's a better way. There's an app called PlugShare. And PlugShare is a crowdsourced uh, charging station locator that'll let you choose based on what plug you're looking for, whether J1772, CCS, Chatamo, Supercharger, Tesla Destination Charger, or Tesla Roadster, or even wall outlets. And you can add to this as well. And then you plug in to those stations. Doesn't really matter what network you're gonna be charging on. Electricity is electricity. There's no premium, mid-grade, or regular. So you just try to find the charger that works best with your route, select it, and then you would go with one of the apps we've talked about today to activate that charger. Or in the case of Electrify America, you can just use your credit card. So yes, it's all fairly simple when you get to the units, although when you get your EV, those are the apps I would suggest downloading, ChargePoint, EVgo, and Electrify America. If you plan on taking a trip, you may come across a few other ones, but those are the majors. And uh, we'll have another video soon on how to actually road trip your electric car. Maybe we'll take the i3 somewhere pretty fun. This is a great car. And we'll show you how to plan your trip out in the most efficient way. But with all of that, I guess we're done with all of the non-Tesla stuff. And next, we'll see you at the Tesla supercharger with a Tesla. And lastly, we've come to the Tesla supercharging sites. Now these are only accessible with Tesla vehicles. All of the other charging options we discussed today are currently available with a Tesla if you purchase the Chatamo adapter. I think it's like five or $600 and only limited to 50 kilowatt. Now there's three different versions of superchargers available. The first you'll find are little posts that are called urban chargers. These urban superchargers are limited between 70 and 75 kilowatt, although some are less depending on the install. And we're really great inside cities. So you can plug in, go to a shopping center, and then get back to your car with a 90-ish percent charge. 
This is a most common uh, site right now. It's a version two supercharger. The way you can tell is it looks like this and it has relatively thick charging cables. They're also lettered 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, etc. And then the third type of supercharger is what's called a supercharger V3. These are 250 kilowatt maximum chargers. They look just like this, but they have a really thin cable that's actually water cooled and they're labeled 1A, B, C, D, and then 2A, B, C, D. Uh, some of the newer installs don't actually put them on the bottom here. They're labeled on the inside, but you can tell pretty quickly if it's a version three by the size of the cable. You can also look on the screen, click on the charger, and it will tell you the maximum output per post. There's one more thing to consider, and it's mostly only needed to know at supercharger version two, and that is for the A and B pair. For example, I'm plugged in on 1B right now. 1A and 1B are actually hooked up to the same cabinet to do all the AC to DC conversion. That's done over there in one of the cabinets. If someone is on 1A and I plug in, it means that I'll get whatever the leftover that cabinet can do in terms of charging speeds to my car. So I would be severely limited in terms of charge rate. What I should do is choose an open cabinet. So for example, 4A and B, as long as no one else is on one of those, and I will get the maximum speeds my car can take. Just like every other car, the Tesla prefers to have the battery warm and to have a low state of charge for maximum charging. So now that you get the whole supercharger thing, how do you actually plug it in? How does this work? It's crazy simple. Let me show you. When you arrive to a supercharger, you can back in and pull in. It's very easy. To activate your account, there's no app or anything you have to do like this. The car knows where all of the superchargers are. It will actually route you there automatically on a road trip. You put your credit card information on your Tesla account when you purchase your vehicle, and that's all you need. The car and the charger talk to each other. So I take the handle here, plug it into the car just like this, and that is literally it. And then of course you can monitor your charging speeds from the screen to make sure that you're not sharing with anyone and that your charger is working, although these things are pretty reliable. Very infrequently does that happen. If you're interested in seeing some Tesla road trips and on other networks on my personal channel, Out of Spec Motoring, link here, I'll link to a road trip video that I've done and I've done about 20 of these long road trips in electric cars if you like that kind of stuff. Thank you.